Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little, and I am here today with the 13th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be going over one of my hands I played recently in a $50 buy-in online tournament. Uh, this hand is going to be relatively straightforward, but as we're going to see, once we start taking a look at what my opponent can actually show up with, this is not exactly the easiest hand in the world. So, right here, my opponent opens it up to 150, and I like to re-raise to 400. You can't really see because my cards are in the way. But I do make it 400 here with pocket queens. And my opponent calls. And at this point, I think my opponent's range could be fairly wide, but probably made up of mostly good hands. And we get a flop of jack, 9-8, with two clubs. We do not have the queen of clubs. And my opponent checks. This is a spot where I think, being on the button, we should be betting pretty much every time and in general not we're not going to be really be looking to fold so he checks I bet 500 into the 875 pot and he raises to 1250 leaving himself 1300 chips behind and at this point we have to figure out what his range is first off because I'm not so sure this is a call I'm going to pull up a poker program real fast and I'm going to plug in our hands and what I think his range is and we will see how much equity we have in the hand. Okay, what I have done here is I have gave, given my opponent a range of jacks, tens, nines, and eights, which would be uh, either sets or the straight draw with the jacks. Jack ten suited, ace queen of clubs, king queen of clubs, ace ten of clubs for the flush draws, and then ace jack of spades. King Jack of Spades for top pair, and also Ace Jack offsuit. Whenever I, he raises from early position, remember, and I re raise him, let's go back to pre flop, he made it 150, I re raise. In this spot, I expect him to, to play pretty tight. And because of that, I do think we can assign him a range that is exactly this tight. Um, we could give him 10 9 of Spades also, or 10 9 suited. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and give him 10 9 suited, but beyond that, I don't really think he's going to show up with too much. So, if we give him this range, we will see that pocket queens actually is in pretty good shape. We have 61% equity, which is obviously fantastic. Uh, if we take out some of these hands, or like say he's never calling with ace-jack, which most pl good players never would, take out king-jack suited, most players would fold that every time, and take out 10-9 suited, let's see how that changes things. You see now pocket queens becomes a coin flip, which is a whole lot worse than 60%. And I think this is what we're going to most likely be looking at. Um, if we take out jack-10 suited and leave us with a range like this, we could probably take out ace-10 suited if we're taking out jack-10 suited. We'll see that our equity is actually now below 50%. We're at 48% equity. So in this spot, purely because my opponent raised from early position and then called re-raise, then decided to do this check-raise play on the flop, I think he has to have a very strong hand here. And you'll notice that against against that range that we just decide, determined, our hand's not in that great a shape. Let's see how it happened, how it changes if, he, if we add an aces and kings, like a slow-played aces or kings. We dip down, dip down to about 40% equity, which I don't think he's really going to be slow-playing aces or kings. This is a spot where pretty much everyone's getting all in with aces or kings every time. But... Um, it's a tough spot. So right here, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put in... Let's get out of the calculator just to show everyone what's happening. We're going to have to put in whatever his stack was, 2,600 minus the 500 we already have, already have put in. So we have to put in 2,100 chips. And if we do get it all in, it's basically going basically gonna to be 875 which is already what's in the pot, plus our 500, plus his 2,500, equals, plus the 2,100 we're putting in. Then we do 2,100 divided by that number, 59.75, I think it was. And you'll see that we need 35% equity to justify a call here. And, obviously what we just checked out over here, is that even in the absolute worst case scenario, which is where he has just very premium hands, you're going to see that we have 39% equity. So, despite the fact that we are going to be crushed, take a look at this range. We're crushed by this hand, this hand, and then these hands. The only hands we're actually ahead of are the 10s for a straight draw, 
Ace Jack for top pair, and then the flush draws. And even they were not that far ahead. Despite that, we still do have about 40% equity. And if we have 40% equity in the worst case scenario, this is a pretty easy spot to go ahead and just get it all in. And I do think that's going to be a pretty standard play. So I do shove. He calls off, and he does have one of those hands that I put squarely in his range. And he wins a nice pot when he turns the king of clubs. And just because you lose a hand, obviously, does not mean that you made a bad play. This is something that weaker players have a problem with all the time. They're like, well, I lost, so I messed up. But this is the sort of analysis you need to be doing away from the table. You need to be trying to figure out, in this situation, can I justify a fold? Now, if in instead of um, queens here, let's say we have jack-10. Let's say we have jack-10 of spades instead. You'll see that our equity actually goes up which is sort of interesting. Most players don't think about it like this, but you'd rather have jack-10 in this situation most of the time than you would rather than you would have pocket queens. Now, if we take out aces and kings, I think it's going to change a little bit, actually. It's going to make our hand... A, I guess it stays basically the same, but it, it gets a touch worse, which is sort of cool. But I definitely suggest everyone play around with a poker hand calculator. Here, this is the Poker Strategy Equilab. I'm not sure if this is widely available to Americans. They also have this program, Poker Stove, which you can see right here, which is, uh, you can just get that off the internet. So I definitely suggest everyone do that, and anytime you have a big hand that you're not too sure what to do, get there and run the numbers and see if you're getting the right odds to call. And in this spot, we needed about 35% to call, and, you know, we're probably about 40% in the worst case scenario. And anytime your worst case scenario is better than the break-even point, then it's obviously a clear call. Now let's see, let's say if instead, we had a break-even point of 35%, and, and I ran a few numbers, and the worst-case scenario was like 30%, the best-case scenario was like 50%, and like sort of a middle scenario was going to be like 40%. In that case, I would still probably go ahead and call, because quite often you're going to find that you're not actually in the worst-case scenario. So that's sort of that goes whenever you start giving your opponent uh, multiple ranges and then averaging those ranges which is something I don't think very many people do. They just assume their opponent has one range. But you have to realize in poker that you can't actually determine someone's exact range. You can determine probably what their range is, but you can never really know for sure. And instead of just guessing which hands are in their range, it's often better to put two ranges together and then average them, to, average them out. So that's going to be that for this hand. You can check back for part two of this video where I'm going to go over my opponent's play and discuss how I think he should have played his hand. And that will be that for week 13. If you guys have any questions or comments, or if you would like to see one of your hands reviewed here, please send it in. This has been Jonathan Little for weeklypokerhand.com. Thanks for watching.